Hello and welcome back. In the last video, we went through the calculation and analyzing of single degree of freedom uh, system uh, considering the damping ratio less than one. Now I'm going to solve two examples and see how it looks like in uh, analyzing. This is the solution for a single degree of freedom system with the mass of m connected to a spring with the coefficient of k and a damper with the coefficient of c in a free vibration u0 and u.0 are the initial uh, displacement and velocity of the system omega is the natural frequency which is a square root of k divided by m and omega d is the natural damped frequency which is omega times a square root of one minus psi power by two for making a good example assume that we have a column with the height of three meters and the section is let's say shs 200 by 10 and a concentrated mass one ton is at its tip now suppose we have a heat to this point with the velocity of one meter per second and the heat mass can be assumed to be negligible compared to the one tone uh, concentrated mass on the top of this cantilever so in our equation we can see that u0 is 0 u.0 is 1 meter per second as far as it's a cantilever we can calculate k which is 3 ei over l3 or here h3 m is 1 ton and we can calculate the rest by matcat which might be easier u0 is 0 u.0 in this case is 1 meter per second uh, for shs 210 moment of inertia is 44.71 10 power by 6 millimeter four. and the height is 3 meters uh, we need also e assuming 200 gigapascal so k will be 3 times e times i divided by h power by 3 kilonewton per meter and then we can calculate natural frequency which is square root of k divided by mass here we need to define mass as well m is 1 ton and natural period 2 times pi divided by omega which is 0 0.2 seconds and frequency which is 1 over t and now we can write down the solution u as a function of t is e power by minus ksi times omega times t times u0 times cosinus omega d times t plus omega dot 0 plus ksi times omega times u0 divided by omega d we need to define omega d as well times sinus omega d times t the only missing part is ksi which we need to define and consequently we can calculate omega d let's go with five percent and then omega d which is omega times s square root of one minus ksi power by two now we can sketch our plot u as a function of t and here we can let's have t from zero to five seconds here is how it looks like and we can see that uh, let's go with millimeter so we have a uh, one ton concentrated mass on the top of this cantilever and we have up to 27.5 millimeter maximum displacement and after that uh, it goes to be decayed fast in in 1.5 seconds we can see that the amplitude is going to be closer to zero some important notes from this uh, calculation let's continue with the note the maximum displacement is about 28 millimeter so with this heat you can calculate what's the maximum uh, force and also maximum bending moment on the bottom of the system so here force is always k times deformation delta max f max will be k times delta max 
and we can calculate what is the peak value of the force on the top which is k993.6 kilonewton per meter times delta which is 28 millimeter so f max will be 993.6 times 28 which is 28 kilonewton consequently we can calculate the maximum bending moment on the support of this vertical column or vertical cantilever m max will be f max times h and m max will be 28 kilonewton times 3 meters so it will be times 3 83.5 kilonewton meter so it means that if a heat occurs to the tip with this given information then we would we would expect to have the maximum 83.5 kilonewton meter bending moment on the base now we can go through the other example that we had previously we solved the example by considering only the stiffness let's go through the example we had so here is the other example we had uh, a cantilever with the point mass of m with the length of l is supported by a cable and suddenly the cable cut and after that the oscillation starts so it seems that it is not uh, it is free vibration but the solution is a little bit different because you need to write down the equation with this non-homogeneous solution we solved it with the assumption of damping ratio to be zero now i'm going to solve it again this time considering the damping ratio mass of m e i and if we sketch the free body diagram we will see that we have this time mg as external force we have f s a times u and we assume that we have also damping in this system so the equation will be m u double dot plus cu dot plus ku equals to mg divided by m it will be u double dot plus c over mu dot plus k over mu equals to g we assume that c over m is 2 ksi omega and k over m is omega s square of which omega is natural frequency now the homogeneous solution is like what we had in the previous video considering si is less than one so homogeneous solution for this will be e power by minus ksi omega t times a cosinus omega dt plus b sinus omega dt and particular solution will be g over k over m which is mg over k and the total solution will be the summation of these two e power by minus ksi omega t times a cosinus omega dt plus b sinus omega dt plus mg over k consider that the equation that we had from the previous uh, video cannot be used since uh, a and b are different in this case now for solving this uh, system u0 is u or let's start with this way u dot t is minus ksi omega e power by minus ksi omega t a cosinus omega dt plus b sinus omega dt plus e power by minus ksi omega t minus omega d a sinus omega dt plus omega db cosinus omega dt and mg over k is constant in the first derivative it vanishes now we can substitute the initial values for displacement and also velocity we know that u0 is 0 u.0 is also 0 so if i substitute this in the first equation 0 will be 1 times a plus mg over k as a result a will be minus mg over k and u.0 0 equals to minus ksi omega times a plus omega d times b as a result b will be a ksi omega divided by omega d and now i can substitute a and b will be minus mg over k times omega divided by omega d times ksi and now we can substitute these values to the equation uh, k over m is omega square as a result m over k can be written as 1 over omega square 
if I substitute that perhaps we can write down in a, a little bit easier way so it will be omega times omega d now the solution will be u at time t will be e minus psi omega t a is minus mg over k cosinus omega dt plus which will be minus g times psi omega omega d sinus omega dt plus mg over k again if we come back to our solution that we had in the relevant video here is when we assume that there is no damping if we assume that psi is zero you can see that here it will vanish this will be zero as well and then here we will have mg over k the sign of negative cosinus omega dt which if psi is zero omega d equals to omega and then it's the same value so here we can just delete this part just to compare now we can continue with the with matcat perhaps it's easier let's start from the beginning or i can just make a new and bring this to there the profile was hea 200 e is 200 gigapascal moment of inertia is 36.92 times 10 power by 6 millimeter power by 4 the length was 2 meters and the mass was one ton k equals to three times e times i divided by l power by three and omega is a square root of k divided by m natural period two times pi divided by omega and frequency is 8.8 .8 hertz we assume ksi is going to be 0.05 and omega d will be omega times s square root of 1 minus ksi power by 2 and here you can calculate damp frequency and also period u as a function of t whether we can bring it from the other case we have some of those parameters here uh, e power then instead of this value it should be minus m times g divided by k and here we have negative this value will be g times ksi divided by omega times omega d and at the end we have plus m g divided by k it is possible to write down the uh, equation based on the function of ksi to check it might be even better so let me just delete this part and go with the function of ksi shouldn't take time and then here we can write down and ksi this will be si here also will be the same now we can plot u as a function of t and zero assuming that there is no damping and then t and 0 0.05 for t let's go up to five seconds or even go to two seconds here you can see the differences between uh, considering the damping or neglecting the damping let's go with millimeter here you can see that it was going to be about seven millimeter we had it earlier in our calculation and now according to uh five percent damping we can see that it starts to decay very fast in one seconds we can see that uh, it has the amplitude value of deflection is fallen significantly that's the end of this video we went through two examples considering damping ratio and we could found how the damping ratio would affect the decay of energy and uh, stopping the system from vibration in the free vibration in the next video i will model these two with ANSYS and we can compare the results with the numerical solution thank you for watching see you next time bye